was Geisinger able to achieve just a 1.4% rise in costs for treating Medicare beneficiaries when the national average is 4 to 6%? Now, that was one of the most gratifying uh, pieces, you know, so in the last year of the demonstration, despite a national trend of about 4.8 percent, uh, we kept our trend for those 26,000 Medicare beneficiaries assigned to us at 1.4 percent. Uh, we did that through enhanced care coordination. Our major strategy for um, success in this uh, accountable care environment was uh, beginning with a medical home and deploying that across our uh, 42 sites and then getting um, specialists linked into that, a post-acute strategy, so how we manage nursing home and rehab patients with a defined strategy around nursing home, and then finally the re-engineering that occurred in the hospital in our proven care model, that surgery with a warranty as it's been dubbed, you know, making sure that the most effective care was reliably delivered to every patient every time. That all-encompassing strategy is really the basis for how we've managed our ACO and allowed us to achieve that great result. The, the good news is most of the organizations achieved significant improvement in cost savings, well below that 4.8% uh, average in the, in the last year for Medicare. So overall, I would say there's been a nice um, improvement in the cost trend, and really the goal of the physician group practice demonstration was to show that medical groups can both improve quality, which was clearly done, and reduce the total cost of care, which again was largely realized. Now the challenge is that because of some limitations of the model, that financial reward was not necessarily evenly distributed amongst all the groups. And that really spurred us in the development of the physician group practice transitions demonstration, in this case meaning transition to ACO. Uh, it's a two-year project, an extension, if you will, of the original PGP uh, in a fiscal, uh, excuse me, calendar year 11 and calendar year 12. Those same 10 organizations are proceeding on with a modification of this, really focused on that national target trend as the uh, goal and then financial uh, rewards will be distributed based on your ability to keep it below that national trend rather than focusing on the impact of the local populations which I think is a much more important metric to look at. It's also extended the number of quality measures well beyond the 32 that were in the first PGP to uh, well into the 60s. They're clustered along the same lines as the Medicare Shared Savings Program, the traditional ACO, uh, and includes uh, measures of patient experience, which I think is a key addition, as well as this concept of bundling the care. So again, looking at the comprehensive care chronic disease such as diabetes or COPD, not just the individual measures, which puts a much higher uh, bar on the organizations to, um, to achieve. The other challenge with this, uh, which I thought was an interesting twist by CMS, is no longer are we going to have a specific target for each of those uh, parameters, but in fact the target will be set by the top performing organization, which is a very high stretch goal. Uh, but you know, it, all, anything that we can do to drive quality improvements I think is worthy and, and a reasonable way to assess that.